Hey gang, thanks for joining me today. So I wanna talk about dual narrowband processing and I have a composition that I worked on this past uh, week, a little bit more than a week, trying to get in between um, clouds and, and, and good scene conditions. And I ended up getting a composition of NGC 7635, NGC 7538 and M52. Um, which was all on the same frame. Uh, really, really pleased with this particular project and how it turned out. Uh, I had some challenges associated with it because of M52 and the open cluster and trying not to destroy that while processing the nebula. Anyway, it was a fun challenge and I enjoyed going through the process. I've been working on pixel math and learning pixel math for the past few weeks and uh, watched a ton of videos. I've spent a lot of time with chat GPT discussing pixel math and getting ideas for different equations and things like that to use and uh, just experimenting. So it's, it's been really fun. Pixel math is kind of like a box of crayons and uh, it allows you just to quickly check different combinations of your different color channels. And it makes it really easy to uh, work with and, and really compose your image the way that you would like it to be. And in this case, I was kind of going for a false color Hubble format kind of thing. Pixel Math made it easy to uh, experiment and try different things. I'll show you at the end of the video. This past week, I was working on my website, which is astroaf.space. And I hope that you will uh, go have a look at it and let me know what you think. Uh, you know, down in the comments, you can uh, leave a comment there in my blog. And uh, I hope that it ends up being a, a nice companion with the channel here for additional discussion of topics in astrophotography and processing and uh, equipment and capturing, what have you, anything that I decide to, to post about where uh, longer form discussion can take place, you know, in comments on specific topics. So I hope you enjoy that. It was a lot of work and I spent a lot of late nights on that this week. So anyway, we're gonna jump into it. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF. All right, we're over here in Cyril 1.2.0. I'm gonna be looking to get to this point. So this is the image that I've already processed. And I kinda of wanna walk you through the steps here of using pixel math. I won't be going through all the other post-processing steps. I've done that in other videos. I'm sure I'll do it in other ones, but I wanted to try and keep this video concise and uh, focused on the pixel math portion of it. So we'll just do that today. What I have is a couple files that I have stacked. This is a multi-day session that uh, I did an HA03 stack in Cyrillic for multi-days. And that uh, output is these two files, which is the HA and the O3 files. So we'll be using those. So to get started, I'm going to open up that HA file, which I was just in. All right, and this is linear right now, so we'll give it an auto stretch so we can see it. All right, I don't really have any stacking artifacts. It looks pretty, a little bit right there. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is a background extraction. And we're using the uh, RBF. I'm going to turn down the samples per line and grid tolerance way down. I'm gonna add dither and generate. We don't need too many samples. Anything that's on nebulosity is out of here or even close. I'm getting rid of stuff around the edges since I am not cropping yet. That will crop later. Um, so edges are gone. I think it's cool. You, can, uh, you don't have to get right on these uh, grid items. You can get close to them and uh, deselect them without having to get your mouse right on top of them, which speeds things up a little bit. I'm going to remove those. And... All right, and then of the ones that are up here, I'm just looking for anything that's on stars. That one's on a star. We'll move it there. 
Anything on nebulosity? That one's on nebulosity. Anastar. That one's okay. That's a little nebulosity there. I'll put one on that dark. I think that is maybe a kind of a dark nebulous area. I'd like to find out a little bit more about that, what that is. Okay, and then I'm going to place a few around the edge, just on the inside a little bit. You know, spend as much or a little time as you want on this kind of thing. That's about all I'm going to do right there. I think I'm pretty happy with that. This one kind of bugging me. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. Um, yeah, let's go with that. And then I'll go ahead and compute background. All right, and apply. All right, my next step here is going to go ahead and do a uh, histogram transformation. Now, uh, what I like to do here is I want to make sure that I understand at what level I'm, um, I'm actually uh, stretching this to. So I'm going to pull up the statistics window. And in statistics, I am interested in this median value. Uh, this is ADU. And I want to set this. It's going to need to end up being, for this image, around 10,000. And um, so I'm going to stretch it to there. And then when I bring the O3 image in, I'm going to get it to the same median value uh, during the stretch process. And this uh, gets a nice calibrated level uh, set of images to take into pixel math and helps a great deal in, 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 in the color balance. So I definitely recommend this step if you don't do it. So we've already done the background extraction. So now we're going to go into histogram transformation. And let me move this over. All right, and we'll give this a stretch. Let me get this into linear. We'll just get this over. All right, that's coming up now. Let's see where we're at. I'm clicking on the execute button over here in the statistics window. And we're up to about 6,650. So um, I'm going to bring the bottom down. I want to make sure I'm not clipping. So after that move, I'm still at zero in the clipping. I can double check. And yeah, I dropped down a little bit because I made it a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit more. All right, we're going to be looking for... It doesn't automatically update, so you have to hit execute each time. But you don't have to hit apply down here uh, to get the, the change visible in the statistics window. So we're currently at 72, 73. We'll bring that up some more. Oop, execute, 87. I'm going to hit apply. All right, we'll bring that up. That should be getting close, if not over. Yeah, 11,000, so let's bring that back. And I'm actually going to bring the lows. Let's see where we're at. 8,000. Okay, 10, 377. We're getting close now. It's in there somewhere. 2,180. Doesn't have to be exact, but I want to make sure that I'm at a place. Well, 10,180, which I'm happy with over here. We'll go with that, and we'll see if we can get the 03 close to that. So I'll hit Apply, and we're done with the histogram transformation on this image right now. All right, so I'll close that. Then I'm going to pull in the O3 image. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Actually, before I do that, we're going to save. All right. Now we can go ahead and make sure and save. Otherwise, you'll lose that. Um, 
and we'll open the O3. And we're going to do the same process on that. So let me go back over into Auto Stretch and Image Processing, Background Extraction. I'm going to leave these settings the same. Click Generate. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now it's not as visible in the O3, but we have a lot of nebulosity in here. And I, I really don't want any points in that area. So I'm going to remove those. We do have this dark splotch there. Making sure nothing's on stars. I think this one can go and I'll move it out here. That's on a star. I'll move it there. Actually, I forget. No, you can't move them. Like you can in Graxpert. All right, and then I'm going to place some points around the outside. We'll stay away from the uh, M52 here. Put something right there. All right. And that's probably going to be good. And I'll put one right here. All right, let's see what we get with that. Compute background and apply. All right, then a histogram transformation. And we'll re-execute this. We're down to a median here of 23.4 because we are still linear. And let's go ahead and bring that up. All right, 94, and then I'm going to pull this to the left. No clipping, we'll apply that. Let's see where we're at, 94. Well, let's bring that to 10,000. 10,183, so the other one was 10,180. I think that's good enough. So we'll apply and close and close and We'll go ahead and save that. So now uh, we have two images with the same ADU levels that we can uh, then start working with in pixel math. So, so here's the pic pixel math dialog. And what we have in here is the, um, the RGBK um, and this, when this, checkbox is selected here, then you can enter into the RGBK field um, a complete string of pixel math. We're not going to be doing it this way. Um, and the the green and blue fields here are disabled right now, so you uh, can't do them. So when you deselect this button, then the green and blue fields become uh, available and the RGBK turns into uh, a red field here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is going to bring in these two images. And I'm going to change their names immediately, uh, the variables. So over in this column, we have a variable field, and then we have the path to the files that we just loaded. So we're going to, stupid emojis, um, we're going to delete the variable name that's in here. Um, I use H for hydrogen, and I use O for oxygen. All right, and uh, that's just so I don't have to type much up into these fields. So at this point, we can actually do a simple, basic 
pixel math as, as basic as it gets. So we can do some whatever you want, oh, but we can, I'm going to do like an H here and O here. These are my variable names. So I'm putting hydrogen and alpha in the red. I'm putting oxygen in the green, and I'm going to put oxygen in the blue, and then we can click on apply. All right, and notice that we have our colors come up here. So this is a standard HOO um, uh, uh, set up for color channels. So I'd like to show you a couple things here. Um, I have played with a lot of different presets um, or uh, you know equations, and I, I've set up some presets. And the presets is nice because you can save your um, uh, you can save these equations for later and uh, and reuse them. So this is the stuff that I've been playing with. When you enter in an equation into any of these fields, out to the right here, uh, there's a little drop down and like a button here, and that will save your expressions down into the presets area. So this is that emoji thing is driving me nuts. Um, so anyway, this will uh, uh, save your equations down here and you can pull them back up for later. So let's play with that just a little bit. So I'll get rid of the, the oxygen there and let's put in, I just double click on that. That gives us um, that equation up in there. So uh, this, we're saying that uh, oxygen, uh, so 80% of oxygen plus 20% of hydrogen for the green field. So let's apply that. All right, and that gives us kind of a nice, a little bit more browns and oranges that came out of there. That's that's kind of nice. You know, um, we can uh, just play around, you know, so we can, we can double click and put the same thing in there, click apply. All right, so that got way too green and actually, you know, sort of like almost cancel stuff out. So um, don't like it, I'll put H back, hit apply. Um, we could try putting a different preset um, into the oxygen here or into the blue. See what that does. So we got kind of a, uh, a cyan more thing going on now. So if I wanted to, then I can come in and I can start messing around with these values. And if you'll notice anything, it's that this value, 0 0.8 and on the oxygen, and this value, 0 0.2 on the hydrogen, they, they equal one, all right? And down here, 0 0.65 plus 0 0.35, that equals one. That's sort of a rule of thumb. If you um, go over um, a total value of one, then you're actually going to be clipping. So at, while we say it's sort of a rule to not uh, go over or under one, um, you can still do it. it. It won't actually prevent you from doing that. So, you know, what's to say, why not try and see what kind of result you get? So anyway, that went pretty green. Um, but, uh, you know, we could we could do stuff and, and see what kind of results we get. Um, they, you know, obviously this isn't uh, what I'm looking for, but, uh, uh, you know, you can certainly mess around with those numbers and not be concerned about uh, it being a sum of one when you're done between the oxygen uh, and the uh, hydrogen percentages. So um, uh, anyway, do what you feel there and mess around with it and, uh, and see if you get something that you like. Now, one thing that I would like to show you, I'll put it up in here right now. Yeah, actually, let's go back to the HOO. and apply. Okay, so that's back to our standard um, uh, color channels. So you can create parameters, all right? And so up here in the red channel, we'll start there. I'll put uh, this. K is going to be um, a parameter here. And the tilde K is uh, means like negative one so whatever you put in the value of K, it, you're going to get the um, inverse value of that. So this is always going to equal one. So if we take K equals, let's say 0.2. So now the value of K is now going to 
populate the K in the field here, and then we can hit apply. All right, and so we got to change. So maybe we don't like that there, so let's go ahead and uh, take that out. We'll put hydrogen back. I'll put that equation there and hit apply. All right, now we're kind of getting somewhere. Now I can play, instead of going in here and, and having to change the values, I can just change here in the parameter. Let's try 0.4. All right, how about 0.6? See how easy it is to experiment? That's 0.7, getting too green. I kind of liked 0.3, I think, maybe four. But this is really flexible, it's quick. You can uh, change the values in here without having to uh, um, do much of anything other than work within your parameter value. Um, and I really like this. Um, you know, then we can, uh, we can do the same thing uh, in the blue. And I'm gonna change this to, oh, I don't know, uh, let's say L. It can be any value. And then here I can do like a comma L equals say 0.2. Okay, so this parameter is now going to pop L is going to populate L in the blue channel. And I can hit apply and see what I get. Yeah, I can change this value. Let's try 6, 0.6 and apply. Okay, it's going purple. Let's go back to 0.4. Okay, that's pretty nice. I have some reds in there. I think I'll back it off just a little bit. Try 0.3. And I kind of like that. So right now we're running two different equations that are using parameters that we only have to update the parameters in this one place right here. And then it will populate the values for us in these fields. So I think that's super convenient. And if, if you haven't tried that, give it a, give it a shot because it uh, uh, makes it a lot easier to uh, just experiment and try to uh, uh, see what kind of different color combinations you can come up with. And when you're happy with it, you know, you hit apply and close. So that, at that point, we are ready to go into uh, star processing and work with this uh, image as we normally would through our workflow. So I think I'm gonna end the video at this point because I just wanted to really focus on setting up to do the pixel math and then show you how I'm using pixel math right now. I'm gonna keep working on trying to learn more about it. Uh, it's really powerful. It's, there's a lot more you can do with pixel math than just colors, um, you know, and I even saw a, a example of using pixel math to create uh, like diffraction spikes on stars and things. So anyway, there's there's uh, an immense amount of information out there, but it does all seem to be centralized on PixInsight. Um, so you'll probably find a lot of uh, articles if you start searching for um, pixel math uh, will be centric to um, PixInsight. However, you can get some good information out of those articles. So I wouldn't shy away from them just because they're PixInsight and you're working in serial. Um, go over and check those out and uh, uh, read through them, get the information that uh, you think is relevant to what you're trying to do. You know, and bring it back here and experiment with it. And uh, heck, experimenting with it is, is half the fun. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed this video and we'll have fun with pixel math. All right, so anyway, pixel math is pretty cool, huh? There's a lot to learn. I have a lot left to learn and I'm just gonna keep, it's just something that's fun, it's interesting and uh, the resources for it are out there, but I didn't find them to be plentiful, you know? And uh, a lot of it is really highly technical, so, just have to work with it. I think it's gonna be an ongoing process. I did mention earlier that I was working with uh, chat GPT and having discussions with AI about pixel math. Uh, I recommend doing it, check it out. And uh, see, or BARD uh, would work as well, you know, with Google. But 
um, it's, it's an easy way to get a bunch of information quickly and let the AI go out and look for, um, you know, doing the searching for you. Um, and it returned a lot of things. And I was able to have a discussion with the AI about uh, certain questions that I have on, on equations and, and how to use them. Uh, I could go back to the AI and uh, describe my results and how can I um, modify the equation in order to get a different result, you know, which is simply like, you know, I'd like to get more blue out of this and how, how in, the, in pixel math can I emphasize the, the, the blue channel more and get information like that, and it was really helpful. So anyway, I suggest checking that out and, uh, and enjoy the process, it was fun. So anyway, I'm Doug, and this is Astro AF, and thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please give it a like and a subscribe, it would be amazing. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll talk to you later.